Ghost Rider number 19. And this is a book that I had been reading. A lot of people were liking. And I kind of fell off it. I, I'll, I'll admit, after that first long arc, I, I was kind of bored. I just kind of like, yeah, I like Talia Warro, but not my favorite character. And I just needed more from the story. Again, it seemed like a story that almost felt like, you know, like a Tales from the Crypt. Not, it's not an anthology, obviously, but it felt like every month I was just like, okay, what monster of the month am I getting? What are we going to mm, get here? Yeah. With? And I think it's even gotten a little bit worse since that first big arc and you end up with talia war road and johnny going and trying to find this cold of mephisto which it's everything sounds kind of interesting and it works out we're in the spooky month of october but i just again i need something to hook me back and i started reading it again because you and me talked about the annual so i'm in but it's still like yeah, do i really like this but we'll see we'll see uh hopefully you will be able to enlighten me and make me more positive. Go see, you'll get me ganky, uh, is what I need. <laughs> Ghost Rider number 19, written by Benjamin Percy, pencils by Corey Smith and Brent Peebles, inks by Oren Jr. and Brent Peebles, uh, colors by Brian Valencia, and letters by VC's Travis Lanham. The one thing that this book kind of gets me is that you end up having things that seem cool, but then you just move away from them really quick. Like, you end up starting out here where... They need to find this Cold of Mephisto. Talia War Road has this history with them. And really, just as an aside, Ben Percy has used the last bunch of issues to give us more of a look at uh, Talia War Road's past. Yeah, I've been enjoying that, getting that little look into her past, yeah. Me and Wes at Thinking Critical talked about this this week on his okay. comic book show. And I, me and him both were on the idea of the more I find out about Talia, the less I like about her, just because she has a dark past. But it's okay. But in this, you start out, she does this crossroads ceremony type pentagram thing where you end up having the, you know, the deal of having the uh, ghost writer give her this compass. It's a pretty cool idea. I was waiting for Robert Johnson to turn up with his guitar. Really? Starts playing. Next yeah. thing you know, you end up having Ralph Macchio there for the movie. He's oh, playing nice. against him. Yeah, I remember so that. Good. It, it was so funny that I'm like, Oh man, like Ralph Macchio playing. Oh, it's Ry Cooter playing guitar. I remember when I found out that it wasn't Ralph Macchio playing guitar. It really upset me. I was disappointed too. Yeah, Jim, yeah. yeah. I thought like, man, he's pretty good. He's you good. end up where it gets this tattoo. It's pretty cool. It's like a demonic tattoo compass. This is going to lead us to the next bit of the cult of Mysterio. And so when you, when you start doing our Mysterio, I mean Mephisto, you start doing this, and they go and they end up in. West Virginia, and it's pretty much the children of the corn in a mine, and things have gone wrong in town. But I'm telling you, when we get to that point, they're riding through town. This town is a wreck. People, people are walking out of doors, dying. It looks things like are Walking just, Dead, isn't it? You know, an abandoned like utopian city or something crazy. Sorry, not utopian, dystopian. They yeah. barely react. They're just like, 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 like they have blinders on. They're just driving right. And there's it's a horrific scene isn't where some poor old man gets a pick through the back of his head. Like, they, they, that with really these surprised kids me. With gas masks and things like that on, but yet it seems that you know you, you have Johnny and Talia. They're just riding through. I, there are cars just broken down in the middle of the street. There are things just personal belong. And they just had these, like, guys, they seem to notice even John closes his eyes. And the big play for me here is, and I know that Ghost Rider isn't in the business of we're going to go to town and save everybody and help things, whatever. No, but that's right. they pretty much mm. roll in and out of town with the idea of we're going to end up stopping this thing. Into, we don't give a rat's behind about anybody here, including these little kids who were possessed, which is an odd play by the end. But again, that's what gives me. And if somebody says, well, that's what they do, that that's the thing. But that's what gives me that play of I never feel like anything has a lot of weight to it because they roll in, roll out, done. It does feel like they're touching on it too briefly, doesn't it? Yeah, you're right. Yeah, a lot you of the think scenes that in you this. Could give a little more oomph to it because you are it trying, a little bit. Yeah, you're trying to play some feels here because we do keep going back and seeing Talia's past. At this point, it's her parents called Dr. Strange and it's nice. Dr. Strange making some house calls. He ends up showing up to check out because Talia has been delving into, you know, the, the dark art. She's been dark doing arts, things. She's missing all these things. Yeah. So 
I, I love this play, and there's a couple things in this issue that make me think, like, this is why Ben Percy always loses me eventually, because he forces issues. He, but, and it's not anything like on a soapbox. It's, it's actually stuff in the issue. But Dr. Strange comes out of a portal. He has tentacles all around him, right? He's, being, he's fighting some Cthulhu demonic monster and then pops in and says, oh, my God, I'm sorry. Sorry for the mess where there's just these demonic tentacles laying in the ground. It's Dr. Strange who just came out of a portal. And he seems to think that it's weird that the next door neighbors are aghast, like stop and go, oh, my God. He walks in because these neighbors just saw Dr. Strange come out of a portal with tentacles all around him and, and squishing and squashing. And he says, oh, to the neighbors, did they look at Talia like they were looking at me? I'm like, really? You, you, you just popped out of a portal with a monster attacking you, you. Me and you saw something like that. We'd do more than stare. We'd be out of there. We'd be, we'd be running. <laughs> I'd See be later. right now purchasing new underwear because I would have cracked that piece <laughs> of my pants. I, I know it. And so just that idea of trying to play that, okay, we get it. Talia didn't fit in. That was clunky, I thought. Yeah, I agree. Stranger in her own house, in her own town, in her own whatever. But yeah, Dr. Strange coming through a portal with tentacles, that's going to make most people at least stop and, and gasp for a second, even if it's just like, Oh shit, Doctor Strange! Look, no way. What's he doing here? Person yeah. like, oh my god. So it's a little odd for him to say that. The next part, though, that I have is just this weird metaphor that just it again. Ben Percy, I think he's just too heavy handed at times with this book. But you have it. It's okay. Doctor Strange goes up, says, "I'm going to check out the stuff," and it's a cool play because it's teenage Talia Warroad who. Thinks that, you know, she's cool, that she's doing the dark arts, probably went to Hot Topics a couple hours ago, got some new clothes. And he's like, oh, I see what you're doing. You're trying to hide this stuff from your pet. You're not going to be able to hide stuff from me. You know, these spells that you're doing are pretty basic for me, but also, you know, pretty impressive, whatever. But I'm here to help you. You don't get much more here except her visage in a mirror that's there yelling and then it explodes. But it, it's it Joker's daughter, I thought, for a minute when I saw that in the mirror. Yeah, it wow. does look like it. And so what you're going with, though, is that idea that she was duped and the same guy who duped her is now duping everybody. He's on pretty much like a, you know, a road trip himself of trying to just get more people to this cold of Mephisto and, and lying and, and manipulating people, which this guy, Stefan, and you ended up seeing it early, like when she kind of realized that this guy wasn't that great, that he's letting people die and she's not into that. It's, it's this weird way. They set her up as, oh, my God, she did these awful things. But then you turn it around. Well, she was kind of being manipulated and whatnot. And that works out well when you get to this town. But they don't do much. I mean, when they go into the town, like we said, it's in, out cave in a mine and then sayonara sucker i mean they leave this place just what it is and you end up where i here's the thing that made me laugh this narration says just like the rider is hidden inside johnny there's a lot of coal in these mountains and it burns hot as hell i'm like what, what does that even mean <laughs> seriously yeah, you're in west virginia there's coal mining we get it but yeah it does kind of burn hot all right and they just roll into town the thing sends them to a, a deal where they find a kid One of the pickaxe kids with the gas mask Really crazy horror movie look, right? I mean, that is straight up horror movie A kid with a pickaxe and a, and a it gas is. mask I was getting like flashbacks Like you said to Children of the Corn But meets the cra the crazies You ever see that movie where, you know, it's just like that Once they get in the mind, I'm thinking Temple of Doom But I'm Temple a big, you know, Indiana Ooh. Jones fan But you end up where this kid comes flying out of the woods With a pickaxe, ah, like Again, a forced way to continue the story. They stop him, and then Talia says, oh, what's going on? Let me use my stare. Oh, my God, it's Stefan. He has been manipulating us. I know how it is. Give me a hug. And then maybe just go back in the woods, kid, because they leave, they leave this kid. Like, this kid's just on the side of the road. What is he going to do now? So, But you get this next deal of, okay, where do we go next? We go to the mine. They go into the mine where earlier the guy who got pickaxe dead, they're bringing him in there and they're going to throw him into the pit from hell. The whole thing with Mephisto. And pretty much, I, I do also uh, love where Ghost Rider just rides the, the motorcycle right into the mine because it's easily accessible. But still, it's a visual for that. But 
the whole play then you get to this mine the big deal right it's like two ish, two two pages. You're gone. Like they go in and say, "All right, kids, we're bringing the mine down." What? You're not going to bring it down? Yes, we are. It cave in, kids running. The end. I'm like, what just happened? Like, what are we getting here? It reminded me, Jim, of the Blade issue that we covered. You know, last week. It was like it was so much was happening. It was like really rushed, didn't it? It felt really rushed. This. It seems as if this book has been cancelled. And so I get it. You want to end the story, so you read. But seriously, this is like when you get done. It's one of those issues. After I read, I'm like, what really did happen here? They they drove into a town. They saw a bunch of children of the corn gone even worse. They went into a mine, caved it in, and left. I just imagine these kids are just sitting there, you know, in town, sitting on the curb, going, "What the hell do we do next? Like, what are we doing now?" And even the idea where they talk to the kid and because it's so quick, so forced, even the narration of what, you know, what they say the kid said, oh, that kid told us that there was economic troubles in town. It just didn't feel like something you'd get from a kid either. No, It's just information thrown at you. Again, I could sit there and it's kind of silly for me to say, well, you're presenting a problem, but you're not fit. This is all about them trying to stop the Stefan and the cult of Mephisto. So they're not going to be there like, all right, we'll get some jobs going in this town or whatnot. But I, I don't know why I need something where I think they just didn't leave these kids sitting there crying on the side of the road. But hey, maybe they did. I don't know. But it just ends to end this whole deal and they get out and off they go. And they're just going to keep it's a road trip. They're going to keep going. But it's it's just too quick. It's too forced. So what, what did you think? Yeah, that's it. Like you say, um, I had to read this a couple of times to try and try and make sense of it because I was a little bit lost at one point. As I say, because I think that he was trying to cram too much into the story. Well, yeah. I'll ask think- you as an aside. I didn't bring it up, and that that you said that. Did you? Because you have a thing when you jump to the past with Stefan and Talia. It does save the past, but sometimes you're reading whatever. I actually thought that was Johnny and Talia at first. I'm like, what are they doing? Like, oh, I did. oh wait, I that's Stefan. Because- because they're on motorcycles, you end up having like the art. And I think the art at points is great. I think the art is really good at points, but sometimes it gets a little bit like, all right, I can't really see that that's not Johnny, that's this other guy, that's this, that. So that, but mainly the art is really good and why my score will be as high as it is. But I just wanted to jump in because I was going to bring that up at a point. I was a bit confused with some of the transitions as well. Me too. It only took me uh, realizing finally that the younger version of Tally with the green Joker style hair, that was the main difference because Johnny looks almost the same as Stefan, doesn't he? Yeah, it's yeah. Weird. It's just, yeah. And it's yeah. weird just you jump to that and they're on motorcycles. So you're like, yeah, they're both on motor. Yeah. So, yeah okay. I mean, it, it's spelled out here that it's in the past, but at first it just threw me off for a second there. But And that's where somebody dies and that Stefan even lies, says, oh, that guy was going to die of a coronary next week. Really? Not really, but hey, maybe. Yeah, it's yeah, a weird yeah. play. It's just a weird play. Dodgy. Very so, Stefan. But yeah, as a score, I don't know. Um, I think my score's actually gone down. I was thinking I was going to go for a six, but I'm a 5.5. Yeah, I think that, here's a funny play. I think I'm a little more positive on that. I'm a six. I'm still, I went oh. in thinking six. I'm still there. I will mention, too, that the covers of this series are really, really good. I really like that Bjorn Berens covers. Uh, Pretty, pretty cool. And and like I said, the art, very horrific. It has that feel. I just think at this point, maybe this would have been best served as a mini or a maxi series, tell a tight story, and then maybe, you know, start again at some point yeah. or whatnot. But I think it's gone on too far. I was like, you too like I, dr- I dropped out and I got back into it because of that recent uh, Weapons of Vengeance, the crossover with Wolverine. That was good. So, and then we did the annual, but... Yeah, just kind of disappointed again. It's a shame. Maybe because he's he's wrapping it up. He's rushing it to the finish. It seems a little rushed. So I'm going to go six year, five, five. You are all weirdos. Weird science is the revolution. Weird science is the revolution.